We are beginning to understand the exact relationship between the world around us and the occurrence of cancer. Investigators carefully following up known cases are searching for the pieces of a puzzle, pursuing a clue. We have learned, for example, that people who spend a lifetime of exposure outdoors, constantly under the sun's rays, are more apt to develop skin cancer than indoor workers. But there are certain exceptions. Why? When we find enough clues, we can begin to plan means of prevention. We need facts, statistical studies we can analyze, compare. Mrs. Jones, have any of these members of your family cancer in the Yes. And how many pregnancies have you had? Every promising line of inquiry is being followed. Family patterns, job history. Will a thousand cases point to a common factor? Statistics. Changing technology, exposure to new chemicals. Are certain cancers more common among people in particular industries? Is there a tendency to be observed? Statistics, throwing light on the mystery. Are certain cancers more common to men than to women? Statistics, facts to be studied. Is there something in our daily work that starts it off? Science is examining every known suspect, samples collected from a hundred places breaking them down in an attempt to find the deadly factor. Research has advanced far since that year of 1918 when Japanese scientists oh, produced a tumor on the ear of a rabbit by painting it with tar. Since then, scientists have found hundreds of compounds that can start cancers, put together models of their molecular structures. How's it coming, anyway? Well, we isolated an active fraction should look something like this. This is your hydroxyl group. We're not too sure about the amino group. Probably here. Yeah. You see, Taylor's... Applied to our daily work, such research can test the effects of the chemicals we use, perhaps help to prevent cancer. But for science, there are still the questions. How and why does the chemical start cancer? What does it do to the cell?